Hi guys and welcome. Today we will be exploring a new feature that has been introduced in Entity Framework 9 that is the use seeding and use async seeding configuration methods. If you have struggled with messy database initialization code scattered across your application or dealt with race condition during seeding, this video is for you. The new methods provide a clean centralized approach to database seeding that eliminates the guesswork from data initialization. My name is Brookane and welcome to .NET Mastery. If you are new to the channel, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, that way you are always notified of the new videos. Let's get back to the main topic and in order to see that in action, let me switch back to Visual Studio and I will be creating an MVC application. Let me call that data seeding demo. And perfect, I'll be using .NET 10 here, authentication type, individual account, and let me create that. Now again, it will be a very simple project. I want to set up an application DB context and connect to my SQL server. We have the app settings here, and there you can see we have a default connection. Let me modify the name here, and that is good. Now what I want to update here is I want to create a model. That is what we will create in the database. And let's say we want to create a users class, users.cs. Inside there, we will keep things simple here. Let me minimize that. And there I will create four properties for ID, name, email, and phone number. Now the question here is how can we see the database? Well, we can do that in multiple ways. Let me show you the old ways in which we used to do things. For that, we will go to application DB context that is created in the data folder. And we have the identity migration. That's okay. You can ignore that. What I want to do here is I want to create a DB set that will be on the user's object. Let me add the using statement here. And I will call that users. We will have the getter and setter. This will be inside the class here. Let me paste that. And on top of that, we will have to add a constructor here where we will pass the base options. But you can see it is using the new notation here for constructor and doing everything in the single line. So what we have here is looking great. Now what we can do is if I go to tools, let me go to package manager console and there we will have to add a migration. So I will say add migration and I will say add users to DB. Let me add that. The build is successful and it adds a migration. There it is creating a table. In order to seed the table, what is something that we used to do? We will go with the older approach. And for that, what we used to do here is within this particular class here, we were basically overriding here the void on model creating and on there using the model builder we were seeding the database so here we can say builder dot entity and what entity we want to work on we want to seed the user's entity so on that we will call the function has data and there we will create all the user object so what i can do here is i can add three users object and that way it will seed our table with three records. I will have to add a closing semicolon here and save that and perfect. Now what will happen is if I add a new migration here, let me do that, add migration and I will call that seed users. With that it will seed the user, let me show that. And perfect, you can see in the insert data, it is inserting that data. So what we can do next here is if I do update database, that will create the database and it will create those user. Let me show that. Let me wait for this to complete here. And perfect, if I navigate back here, we should have the new database. We have the data seeding demo. 
we have the tables here and perfect we have the record so that way you can see seeding was successful but this will be a little more tricky if we had created date or something like that in the record that was dynamic let me show you what i mean by that let me create one more property for created at and that will be date time now what will happen is if i go to where i am seeding the records here we need to add the created at that will be date time dot now copy that and let me add that with that what will happen is let me add the missing comma and now whenever i add a new migration you will see the error that we face i will say add migration and i will say add created at here let me see the result this time it will have an update statement for those three entities because the date time will be different perfect you can see we have that it is adding the column and then it has a date time value but now let's say even after a few seconds you do not do anything you add a new migration here created at one it will again add a new migration because the created at will be different because few seconds have passed so you can see it creates a new migration and there it will always update that time that is not ideal this issue is resolved with the new seeding method that is provided by the dotnet team let me walk you through that for that what i will do is right here where i have the migrations let me delete all the migrations that we have we will start fresh perfect all the migrations have been deleted let me close everything and we will open program.cs now the new seeding method that has been provided we can use that in conjunction with where we have the add db context right here we are using the connection string we will keep that and after that what we will do is where we are adding the connection we can say options dot we have something called as use async seeding now again we have both asynchronous as well as synchronous version and i will have to create this or enclose this inside a curly bracket that way we will have multiple execution here we will be receiving few things in the parameter we will be receiving the context that is the context itself using which you can access database and then you will receive something called as has schema and a cancellation token let me add that here and i will format that as well to align it perfect so now using the asynchronous seeding method we can seed whatever we want in the database but this seeding will be a little different what do i mean by that well when we seed here we are actually using the context here so we do not need the code that we have here which is not as user friendly we had to use something called as has data on the model builder i can remove what i have here that is not needed perfect we can remove the override itself that is not needed we will have app context that we will basically convert to an application db context and then we can work on the database itself in order to replicate what we had before i will create a users list here and then this list we will be able to append to our users using the app context so i can say await app context dot users and there we will call the add range pass my users finally we need to save the changes similar to what we do when we are working with entity framework save the changes and that will automatically append the users but for that what we will have to do is we will have to add a migration and create the tables if i go to tools package manager and package manager console let me add a migration and i will call that initial in the migration itself it will not seed the records and let me show that perfect we have the migration you can see it is creating tables here the users table but it is not seeding records inside the migration these are the identity tables 
and nothing fancy. In the package manager console, I will do update database. Well, let me navigate back here. I did not delete this. Let me delete that here. Perfect. Let me navigate back and I will run the update database again because we have the previous database. Now with that, it will create the database, but you will see an error message as well. Let me show that. And perfect, you can see that a management operation was performed and no synchronous seed delegate has been provided. However, there was an asynchronous seed delegate. The method that we have here is the async version for seeding. Similar to asynchronous version, we also have a synchronous version. Now I know during one time it will either use the synchronous or the asynchronous version, but Microsoft recommends to add both the version to make everything work. So you can see even when I examine the tables here, that did not create the table. What we will do for that is right here, we will say options dot use seeding. That is the synchronous version. Now, right now we are not doing anything inside there. When we have the use seeding here, we will receive the context here. And then I do not care about any other parameters. I can keep that empty here and we will create a function. This will be a round bracket here and perfect. Now what is recommended by Microsoft is in the seeding version, we should have the exact same code that we have in the async version, but this time we will not be able to use asynchronous endpoints. So we will have to use the synchronous endpoints, save changes and add range. With that, if I save the application and if I run that, we do not have to worry about anything else right now. As long as you apply the migration, it will automatically seed the records. So now if I navigate back and if I examine the users here, perfect, you can see we have the users created at is empty. We can fix that easily. Right here, let me do created at datetime.now and if I copy and paste that here in all the places, now you will not see the issue that we had before. Let me save that here. And if I navigate back, let me delete the table here. I mean the database. Perfect. We do not have to delete migrations because in migration, we are not changing anything. He only updated what record has to be seeded. So now right here, what I will do is if I do update database, that will create the tables and it will also seed the records. Perfect. Let me refresh here. And if I examine the user's table here, great. You can see what we have right here. Now we need to make sure that it does not get modified. Let me select this here. Now what do you think will happen if I run the update database again? Let me run that and show you what happens. If you think the time will be updated, you will be surprised. Let me navigate back here and you can see something weird. It applied that migration again, but it created new user. That is not what you want when you are seeding records. So you only want this to be executed once and not again. We can add a logic for that. Because we have the async endpoint here and we have the complete DB context, we can navigate to our DB context and check if there are any users. If there are, then database has been seeded, return back. We will apply that same logic in the use seeding here and it will be any here. Perfect. We will not await on this one. In order to see if everything is functional here, let me delete the database again here and we will try to recreate that. If I run the command update database here, let me see what happens. Perfect, if I navigate back here, and now if I refresh the database, if I navigate to users, perfect, we have three records. If I navigate back here, 
and run the same command update database, nothing will be updated because the users have already been seeded. Perfect. Let me take a screenshot of what we have here. And if I execute this again, let me examine the screenshot here just to make sure that created at is not updated and you can see that is consistent. So it does not update that record that stays as it is. Now what we have in the new seeding function here, we have to write some code here, but you can always separate that in a different file. The main advantage that you have here is basically you can do anything that you want. You can call an API endpoint here to retrieve some random users or even if you have some fake collection, you can implement all of that to seed your sample data. There is one more thing that you can update. Now that is not related to seeding, but it is on how you can call the migration. You know that we have to call the update database to update our database, but that can also be automated in the request pipeline. Where we have the environment of development, what we can do is we can create a scope on app.services.createScope and using that scope, we can call the service provider to get an implementation of application DB context. That way we can get the context variable here and we can call on that context.database.migrateAsync. That will apply any pending migrations automatically. You do not even have to write update database. Things that will be different with that is if I navigate back here and if I delete this database again. Perfect. And if I navigate back to the application, all I have to do is run the application and it will automatically apply all the pending migration, seed my records and do everything that we were doing with update database. Perfect. The application is running here. Now, if I navigate to database and if I refresh here, we will see the new database and there we will see the users as well. Let me show that. And perfect. You can see that is working. But the created ad, you can see that is not populated. Now, can you easily tell me on what happened? When we are using the asynchronous version here, the async seeding was called. You can see in the async, we did not have the date time. We only added that in the synchronous version and not in the async version. You can see in use seeding, we have that. So we need to fix that. If I stop the application here, let me remove all of this and I will add the created at copy and paste that here. And with that, it will work now. All we have to do is delete the database again to see if that works. Close that here and we will have to run the application again. We do not have to write update database. That way you can see the implementation of synchronous seeding as well as asynchronous seeding in action. Perfect, the application is running here. If I navigate back to database and if I examine this time, we should have the created at and that is working. With that, you can see the improved data seeding that has been introduced in EF9 and it is a convenient way to perform data seeding that is populating the database with initial data for testing.